I became an engineer and a builder because I like to figure out solutions to practical problems. I worked on bridges, freeways, and railroads. And as I advance in my career, I find that I, that I do less engineering and more management and dealing with money. And so I joined Engineers Without Borders to reconnect with that experience of solving problems and helping people meet their basic needs like water, uh, sanitation. When you, when you build a health clinic in a village, uh, people don't have to travel long distances to get care when they're sick, and that can make a huge impact on people's lives. And um, so, and, 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 uh, uh, and it's those results that Engineers Without Borders uh, make Engineers Without Borders a great outlet for people like me whose day jobs have maybe gotten a little too complicated to, uh, to experience doing something hands-on. So my story is a little different. I'm not an engineer. I have a background in international economics and international development. I found EWB when I moved to the Bay Area for work. And I just, I remember being so impressed at my first chapter meeting because it was a weeknight and there were over 50 people there volunteering their time. One of the project teams was presenting about what they had done in the summer to build a well in Tanzania and I was just fascinated. So I thought getting involved would be a good way for me to keep up with my international interests, but also it would be great to learn about the innovative technology solutions. That's been true, but what I've really grown to love about the organization is the way we make things happen. This is how it works. A community or NGO on the ground in country makes a request to our parent organization, EWB USA. From there, a team of volunteer engineers vets the potential project to make sure it's a viable fit. Then, the project goes out to bid to all of our chapters nationwide. So there's a little friendly competition where each chapter scrambles to prove it has the right combination of resources, skills, and the right preliminary plan to take on the project. The chapter that's the best fit wins the project and gets to make a five-year commitment to the community. From there, the chapter does most of the fundraising, and the community in country contributes a little of the capital and quite a bit of the labor. Another thing I love about our model is that we're, when we're implementing in country, we always purchase materials locally. That means that not only are we keeping money in the local economies, we're also keeping things simple. If a part breaks or needs replaced, no one's relying on a fancy expensive part that has to be flown in from the US. People in the village can buy a replacement part at the same place it was purchased originally. Using this model, last year alone, Engineers Without Borders USA sent 1,300 students and 750 professionals to partner with 240 communities in 40 countries around the world. We performed 180 assessment trips and we sent 145 teams to implement engineering solutions like clean water, sanitation, schools and clinics, irrigation systems and renewable energy. Overall, our 12,000 volunteers partnered with, spent countless hours of work partnering with 1.5 million people around the world. So we're going to tell you today about some of the projects that our chapter, which is the San Francisco professional chapter of Engineers Without Borders, is currently working on. For example, we currently work in Fiji. This is not the, the five-star resort vacation destination. This is on an island where people usually get by with about uh, five stars a day. And uh, there were three villages in the Buka Bay where uh, they were suffering from a typhoid outbreak. And uh, their water supply was contaminated and it was unreliable, often not running, poor construction and leaks. And uh, after taking on the project in 2007, we went over to assess the situation, we tested the water and uh, the, conducted some health surveys and gathered information, came back and designed the water distribution, system, distribution and, a, and a filtration system. Finally, last summer, we returned and helped the village install, uh, helped the village install the pipe. We tested it to make sure it worked. Here we are testing it. We installed the sand filters, which is the technology we used. And finally, we have running clean water. It's been a rewarding process for both us and the village, and we, we hope to return next year and repeat those health surveys and see a, see a great drop in water-related health issues. So Engelenge, Tanzania is another community we've been involved with since 2006. We have partnered with the Engelenge Development Association to bring water, improved water access to over 2,000 residents in the village because originally there was no water access, so women and children had to walk sometimes for hours a day to get to clean water. 
So, so far, we've installed almost four miles of pipes. You can see some of the women from the village carrying some of the pipes here. We've built several water distribution or storage tanks for the system, one of which holds 15,000 gallons. That was an interesting process. One summer we were implementing and the bridge to the village was out. So we had to ferry all the supplies across the river by canoe. We've built several wells. One of the wells is 50 meters deep and you can see some people laying bricks for the wells on this slide. And we've also installed some sand filtration systems to filter out impurities in the water in Engelenge and the neighboring villages. Most recently, we've installed 18 solar-powered tap stands at different access points around the community. And this is a great moment from one of those, from that recent project, where now no family has to walk more than 100 yards to get access to water. I just love this moment. This is one of the kids in the village taking a shower under running water for the first time. You can just see, I mean, he's scared, he's holding his mom's hand, he's used to bathing in the river, not under a faucet. But you can't beat that smile on his face as he feels the cool water rushing over him for the first time ever. The village of Los Alvarez, Nicaragua, um, the existing latrines, you're seeing one of them in the picture, uh, it was, were, were routinely overflowing in storms and contaminating the, the community's water supply. So our volunteers designed a, uh, a dehydrating toilet that's easy to install and maintain and likely to serve the community for many years. This made, some, made for some interesting weekends in San Francisco where we worked on porta potties as prototypes. And um, <laughs> finally this January, our volunteers went, went back there and uh, helped the village install 10 of these latrines. Uh, they use an environmentally friendly basic design and here's the final product. So our volunteers do so many different things. We spend our nights and weekends here in the Bay Area working on prototypes and designs. We spend our vacation time overseas working to build and to see the results. In this picture, the, this one, this is a prototype session of the Darfur stove, which you may have heard of. It started as a joint project between our chapter and UC Berkeley, and has since spun off to become its own successful nonprofit organization. Here's an early iteration of the stove being field tested by women. Back in San Francisco, these are members of our appropriate technology design team who are working on simple solar water purification technologies. In El Salvador, we're building latrines. And this is us last spring in Haiti installing an upgrade to our micro hydro solar system that powers an elementary school. Back in the Bay Area again, we're working to perfect the blades of a personalized wind turbine to generate electricity. And here, prototype testing one of the versions of the turbine. In the village of Arambe, Kenya, we're doing water sampling and conducting health assessments for a water sanitation project there. We're building bridges in Honduras to serve as emergency evacuation routes and access to health facilities. We're installing water pipes in India. And in El Salvador, we're even incorporating a health and science education component as part of our water and sanitation project there. This is one of the children in the village who's learning how to test her water for, for bugs like E. coli and typhoid with some of our volunteers. And our volunteers all end up having a pretty good time working on these projects. Engineers Without Borders is all about responding to problems with simple solutions. We, we provide innovative people a great outlet for creating real, tangible results. And these results last year alone have impacted the lives and helped meet the basic human needs of over one and a half million people around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.